Okay, so let's go ahead and begin. Notice I'm using the fine point marker because we're getting real here. All right, so Monte Carlo or Monte Carlos, you know, put a little sombrero there. Okay, uh, actually, I don't think I like the fine point. We're going to keep it real, but we're going to go to lower resolution. That way my errors in drawing don't look so severe. <laughs> so um, you probably heard the word Monte Carlo thrown around um, like uh, Markov chain, Monte Carlo, or, you know, a Monte Carlo simulation or whatever, um, or Monte Carlo, the place where there's lots of gambling. Um, and I think while it might sound complicated, this is one of the simpler concepts, uh, at least relative to a lot of the, the this kind of uh, mathematical usage. And all it's saying is basically you have some input distribution. Let's say we have our Gaussian input. You send that into some um, box, some collection of functions, and then you look at its output. This you get output distribution, and that's basically all it is. What you're doing is let me. What you're doing is you got oh oh what the heck. <laughs> what you're doing is that you got some input distribution. In this case, it's a Gaussian, and you randomly sample from that over and over and over again. Send that into the system, and then see how that uh, what the output looks like over, after these uh, new a bunch of iterations. And what people typically use this for is for modeling uh, complex physical systems. Like, say, you got like some cantilever beam, and you're watching to see how it moves. Or maybe you got like a spring attached to another spring, attached to some pendulum to another pendulum, which is then attached to like, I don't know, some kind of like some insect. <laughs> um, the idea is that basically you have some complicated system with a bunch of couplings that's very hard to solve in closed form or to create some kind of analytical representation of how the system will behave. And what, person, what people thought is like, well, you know, we have a powerful computer, so why don't we just take this input, why don't we just take this uh, input distribution, take this, send it into the uh, send it into the model, and then see how it performs. Look at how the distribution of that, and that's a way of kind of looking at well what's going on here and what what kinds of things behave given this um, prior distribution of interest. And that's basically all it is. Actually, if I think back, I think um, I'm not sure if it was in the Manhattan Project, but in the general research on the atomic bomb, I think they used it to study the chain reaction among. The isotopes. I'm not. Don't quote me on that. I'm not sure. But the idea is that basically, again, you have some input distribution that you know. You set it into the system, and you do it thousands and thousands of times, and you get an idea of how the system performs. This is used in lots of things, like studying blackjack, for example, at Monte Carlo, and also for modeling things. You will then learn to hear is the uh, Markov chain Monte Carlo, and it's also used in particle filters. And so we're going to give this. We're going to give a preliminary example, or rather a simpler example, to get the point across, and then we'll extend it into these more complicated models. Okay? Cool. Okay, so let's go ahead and begin our first experience with a Monte Carlo simulation. And we're going to need our Bayesian ninja friend. Actually, you know what? He does not wear blue. No, 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 no. Our Bayesian ninja, uh, at least this ninja, wears all black. Okay, so we're back with our Bayesian ninja friend. If you remember last time, he was trying to chase down a quail, right? But, of course, the, he's using the common filter, but the quail had a jetpack, right? And if we look at that details of the jetpack, there's actually, like, a jetpack within a jetpack within a jetpack, like, recursively forever. And so, like, it just had this crazy accelerated uh, acceleration ad infinitum. And so this magic freaking quail gets the heck out of there. And so the ninja's a little bit sad. Um, he's not sure if he's sad because he couldn't catch the quail or, like, because he, like, loved the quail and he just he just wanted to catch the quail because he was, like, he loved, loved it. But uh, he couldn't catch it, so he goes home to his um, dojo, a Bayesian dojo, <laughs> to train up on some more of his ninja hood so they can actually catch the quail. And so he goes to his grandmaster, and like, here's his grandmaster's head. Oh, he's like, he's like a very serious guy. He's got like a scar over his eye. <laughs> but now he does. <laughs> and he actually still has his hair, because I don't know, he's like some kind of weird magician dude. And like, He's got his arms, and like let's just say like he levitates. And he goes to his grandmaster, and he's like, uh, how can I get better? Teach me, Grandmaster Bayesian Ninja. And he says, okay, to become a better Bayesian Ninja, your task is to use Ninja Stars and this dartboard to calculate the value of pi. And the ninja's like, what? What? And so he goes to the forest and thinks and you know, busts out his textbooks, and then he realizes, oh, I know, I know how to do this. And so what he does is he goes, and he goes, he gets his ninja stars. And um, there's one ninja star. Uh, these are advanced amorphous ninja stars. 
Uh, they don't look like normal ninja stars on purpose. <laughs> Anyways, he gets these ninja stars and he's going to start throwing them at the dartboard. But he does something first. He draws a circle, well, a circle perfectly within the square. It's supposed to be touching all of all sides. And what he's going to do is he's going to throw his ninja stars with tremendous skill and make them land randomly and random even distribution within this dartboard with a circles in it, with a circle in it. And so he's going to be throwing them. And if he's really good, he'll be able to get this random distribution. And what he's going to do is he's going to count up how many of these... Okay, every time he throws it, he's going to go, did it lie within the circle or did it lie outside the circle in this uh, perimeter area? And what he's going to do is, okay, so the total number of stars I threw, the total number of positions, is going to be n. And that's n within the square, right? That's a number within... They're all within the square unless he misses, but he doesn't miss. Then um, he counts up the number of dots that are just within the circle. This is the n circle. And so if he counts up this, these, these total dots, and the dots are just within the circle, he gets the ratio of areas, of the ratios within the circle, relative to the ratio within the square. That's what this calculation will be. And then you go, okay, well, how's he going to use that to calculate pi? Well, let's go back to our basic math. We have the area of the square. Let's just draw a line through the middle, call that x. Well, that's going to be x by x. So the area of a square is x squared. And then the area of the circle, that of course always is pi r squared. r here is half of x, x over 2, so x over 2 squared. That'll give us pi x squared over 4. All right, so those are the two areas. Now let's calculate the ratio. So the area square over the area, area circle over the area square is going to be pi x squared over 4 over x squared. Cross those two out. Pi over 4 is going to equal our ratio. So that equals our big ratio. And so we just move 4 to the other side, multiply the ratio that we get from over here, multiply that by 4, and we get our value of pi. Now, so the idea is that we're using this random distribution over here. We're randomly throwing ninja stars over the entire area to calculate a ratio. And then that ratio is used to calculate pi. So the, the arithmetic here isn't really particularly in, uh, important. The, the implementation is what's interesting. And what we want to look at is say, well, what if we have an even distribution, like I just said, of uh, ninja star throws? But what if we have a Gaussian one? Or what if we only throw 10 ninja stars? The idea is you want to see how to implement it in MATLAB, then also see, you know, what are the dynamics of it? If we, what happens as we change our sample size? What happens if we change our distribution? How does it affect the actual estimate and the asymptotic performance of, of our uh, Monte Carlo simulation here. Okay?